Welcome to the talk show Philly Bengali Institute State. Today my guest is Mr. Kamal Munasinghe. He is the general manager of Cinnamon Grand and Cinnamon Lakeside. This is the second video that we are doing with Cinnamon and we are going to talk about today Cinnamon presence and the role of uh, destination branding. Also we will harp on the destination branding what we are going to do in destination branding in Sri Lanka. So in in today's discussion we are looking at Malaysia as our role model. Let's see how it goes. And Mr. Munasinghe has a uh, intense career. He is an international hotelier, also a Sri Lankan. We he has his his own history and own story to talk about. Let's hear uh, hear about it. Hi, Mr. Munasinghe. Welcome to the show. Good afternoon, cousin. Good afternoon. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me, and welcome to Cinnamon Grand. And uh, yes, I look forward for uh, to a, a very interesting discussion with you. and i've seen your your discussions with the other leaders in the industry and i thought it's very interesting so i look forward to it thank, thank you thank you role of a international hotelier it's very impressive to hear mr kamal munasinghe has a international career we like to hear his story what is your international career mr munasinghe um where did you start and how did you work kasun to 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 be honest this is actually a coincidence that i i landed in hospitality industry uh when i was uh, a child i mean when i was studying um there were these riots in sri lanka and uh, the education was disrupted in 1988 89 so what uh, my father told me was at the time he said i don't think that uh, you can continue your education um at this time uh it's better to look out and go outside to study and and do your further studies there so what i did was at the time i had no idea how to find uh, uh, a university where to go and all that so i also didn't have an idea of what to do so i talked to one of my my teachers in the school i was at nalanda college at the time that is 1989 1989 yeah. yeah early 89 So then, uh, that uh, master uh, in charge of badminton, he helped me out. We went to Switzerland. We decided on hotel management, the Swiss embassy, and then we met the agents. So my journey started. Um, I ended up going to Switzerland in 1919 January. Completely a different uh, experience. Okay. Uh, going into Switzerland in winter, the university is in is in one of the the ski mountains, ski resorts. First experience of a what is proper. University? Chile International University is right. an American right. university based in in Switzerland. Um so we were eight Sri Lankans at the time and uh, 120 students in the faculty. Um a great faculty operating hotel um and the classes and and the education was given inside the hotel. So we had the first hand experience of learning and working in a operating hotel at the same time. So um I must say that was my foundation for hospitality. and then from there onwards uh, i started working for different companies like uh, first job was actually serving breakfast for uh, student crews so coming in the, over in the campus itself yes. no it was uh, during summer vacation okay. we had about 3 and 1/2 months summer vacation every year so we were allowed to work in outside the hotel uh-huh. uh, the campus uh-huh. so we were given an opportunity in a hotel chain called dorin hotel is a german chain and i was responsible to serve breakfast for uh, incoming student groups uh, uh, to to Switzerland so that was my first so to say first hand experience right and then there on i used to work for mervan pick restaurants i used to work in the kitchen and as well as in in front in the service um then i took on a, a position at uh, at mervan pick uh, airport hotel as a, a bartender i worked my way up to become a, a chef de bar so bar manager what is the city uh, uh, in zurich sorry sorry it's a, a mervan pick airport hotel in zurich um, that was in early 90s 93 um so that i completed my education and then i joined with best western in luzern in the okay. city called luzern um i was there for about 6 months i always wanted to come back to zurich because i like zurich So then I had an opportunity to work with a, a bigger hotel in Zurich called Hotel Zurich, a local hotel chain. Um I was given an opportunity to start as a room service waiter. Are you familiar with German or French? I do speak German because I've been in the German speaking part of ah, okay. Switzerland. So, Switzerland yeah. Uh so when you are in the German speaking part uh, you know you you tend to pick up German and also as a second language 
uh, we had to learn German in in the university as well. So it's quite interesting living in Switzerland. Of course, Switzerland is a lovely country with snow and chocolate, right? And, you know, so experience uh, in Switzerland. Why don't you talk about bit there? Um, yeah, it was. We'll a, keep career for a sure, whole. Sure, sure, sure. sure. We'll Switzerland talk about is your a life in Switzerland. An, yeah. an interesting country, and uh, you know, I had the opportunity to go to Switzerland when I was seventeen, yeah. right? Um, so it was in early part of my life. So it was a great opportunity. And when you look at the country as a whole, it's a very well organized country. Small country, a population of about four to five million uh, inhabitants, uh, but a beautiful country, well kept. Uh, well organized now if you very look at reserved people you know? uh you know in the early days maybe you can say they were a bit reserved but then uh, you know when like i said when i first moved it was a mountain right yeah. mountain resort and people when they saw us uh, we were eight sri lankans like i said uh, different skin color you know and people used to kind of stand there and watch us uh, who are these people here in 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 our village <laughs> at the moment you know so but then they got very friendly yeah. uh we became very close friends actually with some of the families in 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 that village called Engelberg uh to date i keep contact with those families sometimes so once you get to know them they are very um open people and very friendly people like you said at the early days maybe it was a bit reserved it was uh not so open uh like uh, the germany or italy, italy yeah. uh or but neither france yeah like even france but um, as i live along uh, over the years you know i i also felt the change uh, people started speaking more english the younger generation started speaking more english um, so it became very multicultural uh, country especially zurich that's one of the reason also why i wanted to go back to zurich was um, i like the 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 mix of cultures that's in in, in zurich you know ambiance no ambiance, ambiance. Yeah. yeah so again i want to uh, live in Zurich because right. that's a good experience because Correct. it's very rare occurrence that we we hear this experience yeah. most of the time if we, we meet people those are from APEC or any other country but yeah. people who live in Switzerland it's it's a different experience all in all right. so uh, so how this the, the life went on there you know your no, other than your work right your life yeah so you know I managed to meet quite a lot of people Swiss actually um got very friendly with a lot of the the people that i meet uh because of my my trade as well i believe because you tend to meet a lot of people when you're in that trade um living in switzerland as a foreigner for me at the beginning like i said it was a bit strange because of that closeness that they have but as you get along and get to know the people get to know the culture you also kind of have to adapt a little bit right because you can't be a a foreigner uh, and and yeah. be a sri lankan always in 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 switzerland i can give you one example when i when we first went to the university for the welcome dinner um hans uh, george muller was our dean of school okay and uh, he used to be the director of food and beverage at mount lavinia hotel in the 70s okay back in the days back in the days and we were all eight sri lankans gathered in one corner talking in singhala and he comes to us and then he goes uh in perfect singular me ogol level de inne international university he kada me ke english en kata karana puru wenna and that's the only time yeah. he talked in singular to us yeah. and but he said that in perfect singular and he gave us the message you know yeah. what what we should concentrate on so so that was a good example of swiss being outside even in the 70s uh bringing you know uh, know how from the other countries and you know giving that out to the students so for my my life in zurich was very good because what i say is i had uh, a very comfortable life uh the accommodation levels the transportation in in, in switzerland uh the level of uh, standard of living is really high when you compare even in, in within europe if you look at it uh Switzerland is rated as one of the highest in, standards in uh, Switzerland you meet the entire world because of this Geneva international organization and things right. like that so how do you really see the political arena in uh, Switzerland actually politically people don't get involved in any Anything. political discussion our discussions in Switzerland were nothing to do about politics it's it, just on business it yeah. was about business it was about life it was about uh, what we are going to do in summer it was all about life yeah. you know so we were in uh, sorry we are coming back to the the your career now, right. the surik airport right. right so we'll talk from there yeah i was i was at uh, yeah surik uh, no from there i moved to uh, zurich marriott hotel okay 
uh, which was a 276 uh, room hotel, two towers owned by a Swiss company. Um, I joined there as a room service waiter. Um, just to give you a highlight on that. That's Best Western? No, that yeah. was the this, uh, Hotel Zurich. Okay, Hotel Zurich. From Best Western, I moved to Hotel Zurich, Hotel Zurich. In, in Switzerland, yeah. in Zurich. So there, um, I was assigned to run the room service operation for afternoon shift. And I was the only person. Okay. Serving 276 rooms, I was the order taker. I had to prepare my, my trolley after taking the order. I carried a beeper. So whenever I get beeped, you go to the nearest phone, take your order. This was in 93, 94. So being a, a person alone handling 276 rooms as a room service waiter gave me a good experience how you can organize, get yourself organized to be very effective when you're delivering service. Because Switzerland is a very expensive country. Labor force is very, very expensive. Um, so you can't have uh, additional people uh, moving around um, so they're very, very effective in how they manage their manpower and also they give you the tools that uh, what is required to deliver your, your job task. And uh, based on that, I can say that 276 rooms was managed by a single person. So how many properties you served in uh, Switzerland? Switzerland, it was, I have to count. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> how many number of years? That, that's it was altogether 17 years, 17 including months. the three years of studies. Yeah. yeah. So thereafter you moved to... Uh, uh, from Switzerland, you know, uh, from Zurich, actually, uh, then 1987, Marriott came in. I automatically became a member of the Marriott. Uh, I was in Switzerland, uh, again. In, Switzerland okay. in the same hotel. Uh, Marriott took over the management. The hotel Zurich. Yeah. Hotel Zurich. Yes, they okay. took over the management. Yeah. Uh, then I worked there for a uh, few more years. I worked up to be a, a director of restaurant, heading the food and beverage department. Then I also worked in the rooms division as the as the as the permanent duty manager of the hotel. Okay. Then I had an opportunity to come to Sri Lanka uh -huh. in 2007. Uh, towards the end of 2007, uh, I had the opportunity to meet uh, Mr. Sanatu Kwata, the chairman of Mount Lavinia Group. So we had a good conversation. He asked me to come to London to meet him. That was uh, my interview with him. Yeah. Uh, then I met him in London. We had a good conversation. He offered me the job. I came to Sri Lanka without any hesitation because that was the first time that I was going to be working in Sri Lanka. So Mount Lavinia was the home for me for about three, good three plus years. That was with Mr. Deopura? Mr. Mr. Deopura. Yeah, yeah, he was the general manager. Yeah. Uh, when I came, there was no general manager, but then after, I think about six to eight months later, yeah. uh, Andro joined. So uh, we had, a, I actually I had a, one of my best times in my career was Mount Lavinia Hotel. Uh, Same as mine, because my last hotel was uh, Mount Lavinia Hotel before I joined Akira. Right, right. So I have worked with Mr. Devapur as well. So after I left then? Yes, yeah. that was 2012. Oh, you joined? Okay, I left in yeah. 2010. Yeah. 2012 yeah. to 2014. End of 2010 okay. I left. Yeah. yeah. No, because the experience was great means because the food and beverage is so vast and I was responsible for uh, BMICH plus the Mount Lavinia operation. Right. Um, so I got exposed to quite a lot of things uh, in terms of food and beverage uh, in, in Sri Lanka. Mount Lavinia Hotel itself, it's not a hotel, it's an institution. So exactly. you will learn so many exactly. things. You have yeah. histories, traditions, yeah. you know. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the people there, people also, there you yeah. know, and Chef Publis yeah. and, and all those things. Legacies, you know, legacies, yeah. legacies right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. For, for our industry, they have done quite a lot. Exactly, know? yeah. And uh, Mount Lavinia as an as a, as a, as a, as a institution also have done quite a lot for yeah. the industry. So, yeah. From as an institution, yeah. Institution, yeah, yeah. correct. Yeah. 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 So then I uh, worked there for about three and a half years. Uh, then I was in Switzerland again, visiting and meeting my old boss. And we are very good friends. Yeah. Uh, uh, then she mentioned to me that uh, Marriott is looking for people in, in Southeast Asia yeah. if I'm interested to rejoin the company. Um, then I said, yeah, if there's a good opportunity, I will join. So I ended up in, in Saigon uh, at the New World Hotel. It's a 500 room hotel as the director of food and beverage. So where is this country? Uh, in Saigon, in Vietnam. 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 In Vietnam. Vietnam. Yeah. Vietnam yeah. So you are coming to uh, East Asia now. East Asia, right? right? Correct. So Sri Lanka was a transit, then Correct. you went to East Asia. Yeah. So, East Asia experience. So, you got a very rare opportunity to work in Mal Malaysia. Very few uh, Sri Lankans who get the opportunity. Yeah, to work in that Malaysia. is because uh, I think I was with the Marriott and then I got a transfer yeah. to go to, to Malaysia after four years being in uh, Ho Chi Minh, yeah. in Saigon. Um, then I was with uh, a 900 room hotel in, in KL, uh, Renaissance KL, it's under the Marriott flag. 
uh, worked there for about a year. Then I had an opportunity to open a hotel for Alila. Alila is a very boutique group. Uh, now it is under uh, Hyatt uh, Corporation. Um, while I was working there, Hyatt acquired the group. Um, so I had the opportunity to open uh, this hotel in, in Kuala Lumpur. Again, Kuala Lumpur. In Kuala Lumpur. Kuala Lumpur. Yeah. Well, what part of is it? It's, uh, uh, it's in the central area. Central. Yeah. KL Central. KL Central. KL Central. Uh, you know the area of Bangsa. Ah, okay. So that's like just uh, one station away from KL Central. So now, then you are taking over or a flagship hotel in Sri Lanka. Yeah. Cinnamon Grand right. and uh, basically Cinnamon City properties. Cinnamon is the, uh, the only local <coughs> conglomerate that we have who is going into the international level. So we, you have to talk about your Cinnamon experience. Yeah, it, again, I came to Sri Lanka after I finished my contract at, uh, at Alila um, in, in the midst of COVID last year in May. Um, went through quarantine and then everything came out. Then I didn't come with a plan uh, to Sri Lanka. I wanted to come back because of my son, because yeah. he's studying here uh -huh. <coughs> and he's quite small and he needs by, by presence here, right? So that's why I thought yeah, I should come back now. So I came and then I heard uh, Cinnamon Lake general manager at the time was leaving. Um, so I got in touch with the uh, Cinnamon team and then um, I, I had an interview with uh, VP uh, HR. Mm. Then I met uh, our CEO, current CEO. He was the head of city sector at the time, Carl Swenson. We had a good conversation. I felt comfortable. He felt comfortable. So uh, the the conversation went, worked, yeah. went on, you know, for one or two months. Uh, it was a, mm. uh, a process. And then uh, at the end, um, I was offered the general manager position for both Cinnamon Grand and Cinnamon Lake, and which was a great privilege, I think, you know, to work for Cinnamon. I've uh, always kept an eye on Cinnamon uh, throughout my career. I uh, never had an opportunity um, and never thought I would be the general manager at uh, Cinnamon Grand, which was a... Uh, is a Great property, yeah, think, you know, for, iconic uh, uh, property, property for Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka, yeah. you know, not just for cinnamon, but for Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka. <clears throat> and uh, being part of the cinnamon hotels and resorts, and at a very exciting time because yes, COVID gave us a lot of uh, uh, problems, and then you know, but with that, we also identified some opportunities, right? So, cinnamon hotels and resorts went through a, a, a drastic a change, structural change in order to get ready for the next... Uh, uh, structural change meaning <coughs> the physical or the human? Uh, in our human Hi structure. Both. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, uh, Mr. Bun Singh, I will go to the second question, which is your hobbies. We, your viewers, our uh, show grammars would like to hear your uh, hobbies. Yeah. My main main hobby is travel. Okay. Yeah. Since, the, since I was a small child, I've been traveling. I think it comes from my... My family, my family used to take us on trips every school holiday in Sri Lanka. Uh, we were not privileged to go out of Sri Lanka yeah. at that time. But then when I moved to Europe, uh, my first trip was to Italy to, to Sicil, Sicilia. Sicilia. Uh, yeah. Uh, by train. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Uh, there was a, we crossed Swiss border. Swiss efficiency was there. We entered Italy, uh, train strike. So I was stuck in the train for two days to get to have you, have you have you seen the volcano or since Sicily? No, we, at that time when we went there, no, we yeah. haven't. Yeah. But uh, I I had the greatest time there. The food, the culture there, you know, I have some friends uh, living in Sicily, so it was a great time I spent. It's about a lovely two weeks. island. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, how many countries altogether you have visited in terms of travel? Huh? For um, yeah, in terms of leisure purposes. All, uh, in in if you look at Europe, I have done most of Europe, I think. Yeah. Uh, What's the best destination? Uh, for <laughs> me, uh, I can't say a destination. In Europe, I like Croatia very much because Croatia. I used to go to Croatia every year. Yeah. Every year yeah. since 2002. Um, so we used to drive from Zurich to, to Croatia. Yeah. And the drive was through the Italy, through Italy and then Slovenia. And then you enter Croatia and then that drive along the, the Mediterranean, Mediterranean Sea, sea. Is, a, is a great experience. Yeah. You know? So, yeah. If you ask what's the best de destination in Europe, it would be definitely Croatia for me. Yeah. So um, now uh, I would like to go into the core uh, area of the discussion. What we are going to talk about is here the, the cinnamon prisons. It's one area for Sri Lanka and the destination branding. So destination branding plays a vital role in, in any destination. So Mr. Munasinghe has a lot of experience in different countries and different parts of the world and where where we would like to uh, get your uh, 
expertise on uh, this destination branding yeah um i think the best example we should not go any further if you look at malaysia i had uh, a great time working in malaysia and i also so you, had you you are limiting it to malaysia you are taking just as just as a, because we, let's stay within the region within and the see region. you okay. know what we can do if okay. you look at even the other destinations other countries where i have worked in 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 the region um, they go from 25 million tourists annually to up to 40 million you know to thailand right um and we as sri lanka as a destination we have lot to offer but we have managed to achieve about 2 million tourists annually that's our highest number uh, so far no why i want to look at malaysia as the model um they came up with malaysia truly asia truly asia quite some time ago but they stick to that strategy to that slogan and they build the whole campaign around that and they were they still have that campaign. they still have that they still have that that's campaign. the thing that's what i want to get at yeah. uh, you have a strategy you have a slogan you work towards that and then you build your campaign but within that you have had many other campaigns they 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 run in 2015 they ran uh, uh, festivals in malaysia and they talked about all the festivals in malaysia then they had intermittently they were doing uh visit malaysia promotions every other year or so even 2019 they have visit that. malaysia so they they keep highlighting their up and coming new things uh, what can be promoted to the world right so it is very important that we have a long term strategy developing tourism um, as a destination uh, if you keep changing our our strategy of developing lines and everything yeah then it's it's quite tough to go back to the world because we have to build that story to the world and that picture Uh, about Sri Lanka right Sri Lanka has lot to offer if you look at the destination Sri Lanka we have i think everything to offer in, under the sun right we have the different terrain the flora flora fauna the the wildlife we have the mountains uh, the culture the food ayurvedic of course festivals of the festivals plus of course you can't forget the sea sand and sun right but sea sand and sun should not be the focus of it because we have lot of other things uh, to so, address uh, we you brought the discussion to a very interesting point now as a uh, stakeholder right you are one of the stakeholders in the industry right, right hotel sector what is our role in terms of our role this? our role at the moment i would say um we as a brand as cinnamon uh, yeah, we are a bigger brand bigger, bigger brand uh, we also have a travel arm so we keep doing uh, quite a lot of destination promotions uh, all around the world so with this new structure that we have put in place we will also we are also looking at having global sales office so in our key source markets where you're going to have the global uh, it, it could no Glo- global sales office would be in europe uh, we will look at the key source markets and then we will we have identified the the markets that gives us uh majority, majority of tourism coming into sri lanka uh, it's china it's india the europe as a whole if you look at it and then even scandinavia has been a great in the early 80s you know 80s, yeah. yeah so these are the the identified markets and then we are looking at setting up our own global sales offices so what they do is they go out to those countries those destinations and talk about sri lanka promote sri lanka as a brand of course cinnamon as the hotel to stay when you when you come to the island right so that right. is our key key uh, focus at the moment setting up these structures so i wanted to talk about a very important point this moment because the during this uh, recording olympic is happening right olympic is happening yeah. cinnamon has done a wonderful uh, milestone there you all you all are the hospitality partner right. for sri lankan uh, team for the sri lankan delegates so why don't you big talk about it because it's just just a highlight of the town right now yeah um thanks for giving me that opportunity that brings me to our next uh, also the the destination driver as cinnamon what we have done what we are doing actually cinnamon life so cinnamon life partnered up with the olympic committee to host the olympic team that is going to japan and uh, they, they are already in japan now. yeah they, they are already. we have one or two officials still to go to to japan but most of them are already in japan and i think they had a very good experience we have had uh, discussions and and conversations with them they were in a bubble uh, but we managed to kind of deliver the experience that they expected um, finally we managed to achieve the final results they are safely in japan uh, and hopefully they will bring some medals as well 
when it comes to cinnamon life again uh, this was part of cinnamon life's uh, uh, partnering up with with the, the olympic committee to to host them at cinnamon grand because cinnamon life is not there yet but cinnamon life as a as a product will drive quite a lot of attention to sri lanka it's a 1 billion dollar investment that cinnamon has uh, put in and we are hoping to open within the next five, next year and uh, this will definitely be a destination driver for sure so the interesting fact is it's um, it's authentic right. it's sri lanka yes. you know so we have other brands not discriminating on the brand Correct. but these are this is the only cinnamon uh, this is the only sri lankan brand which goes to the international level with olympic because the entire world sees sri lanka right. and cinnamon so right. that's a very interesting, very interesting uh, combination, combination and, yeah, and yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely yeah, absolutely so um, still i wanted to uh, hold on to the same <laughs> question what we were talking about uh, looking at malaysia right. as a role model to sri lanka <clears throat> what uh, what Uh, the best practices that we can take into uh, our consideration yeah so other than the, the campaigns yeah uh, that is one thing that we looked at uh, when you look at uh, campaigns right as a destination driver and then when you look at uh, the infrastructure the tourism infrastructure what can a tourist do when they come to sri lanka they're not just coming to stay in a hotel room or they're just coming to go to the beach and come back and get some sunburn um they want to be able to experience sri lanka the most authentic way right um the hotels should gear up i think in my opinion with uh destination driven wellness well-being and mindfulness programs this will be a huge driver for sri lanka uh because i think there is also a huge interest in the global market for this segment even uh yeah true the millennials yeah. as well as everyone else is very health conscious in uh, after covid it has become even more interesting for people you know so this is an area that sri lanka can really work on and we as a brand uh, or every other hotel can have lot of programs develop sri lankan nice uh, localized, localized programs program. that can go to the world and and send a message you know so no why why i took this point now uh, wellness wellness plays a bigger role in the world but people are so health conscious yeah. and uh, so um, uh, conscious about their food and everything so what steps that we can think of it right i i i'm sure that sri lanka tourism is talking about integrated wellness uh, resorts and right. things like that right. as a private sector right. organization right. what do you really think i think it's uh, every hotel other than spa and recreation yeah, stuff exactly right? yeah. every hotel can create this programs right whether it's a sunrise yoga program whether it's the 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 dietary program that you offer whether it's the engagement in in sport activities uh or ayurvedic healing um depending on which part of the country you are uh, city properties can do differently than a resort property um so it will actually be uh, something that each and every individual hotel has to customize based on their positioning and and, and what they want to do and offer uh but sri lanka has lot to offer in that sense so we as 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 the stakeholders of this industry definitely we can craft in those areas what i mentioned earlier uh, not just looking at uh, fitness center or yoga program yeah. but it's a, it's a whole holistic approach holistic approach holistic approach on that yeah uh, mr musika now next point i wanted to emphasize the fact on technology yeah. that the last point on this uh, uh, segment the technology for uh, the role of destination branding or destination marketing how do you truly really see that because I, now nowadays people are talking about Uh, technology it's yeah. high it's digital right. everything is digital because of the pandemic it's everything is digital so right. digital plays a vital role in our branding and destination and things like that so how do you see this i think there's a huge role to play uh, uh, with technology in when it comes to brand marketing and and also for hospitality industry but we must also not forget that hospitality also depends on the human touch uh we can't completely take that out of equation right but in terms of when you look at the technology and how we can promote the destination i think we are already working on that i think i know that sri lanka tourism is also working on a huge campaign which is also very much digitalized digitalized yeah, yeah. so and and uh, uh, when you when you see and read uh, what is coming up with this program and what we have allocated in terms of budget uh, from the government is very very encouraging for us to see um i think there's a long way to go 
uh, but it's a very good start allocating the funds having the right people handling that that uh, segment um, and digitalization is the, is the way to go for especially for marketing i think brand marketing um, that's that's what we are doing now you know so in terms of hotels um, digitalizing you know you talk about robots doing certain things uh, uh, you can do few things but i don't think that we can do a lot uh, there are areas where we can work on on technology in terms of you know uh, improving processes uh, where we can work on on technology uh, but uh, service element has to be there the human touch has to be there that's how the the, the industry grows and and, and the, the hospitality industry build on you know is so mr singh uh, institution like us will have a bigger uh, role to play in the industry also destination branding and so on and so forth so i want to hear what is your impression towards william anglis institute yeah william anglis is is a, a university that i heard a lot about but i never had the 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 chance to visit unfortunately i will come and visit one of these of course days. sure yeah come and have lunch with us i would love to yeah. do that yeah. uh now when i look at william anglis what i see is i've been in the back in sri lanka now in in operation since last october i have come across few students who uh, have come from william anglis and then i must say they are by far uh, the best students that i have seen so far okay um, over the last 10 months that i have been in operation um they are your I, management trainees they are management trainees and they have completed the management training program now uh, they will be absorbed into our our usual workforce at the hotel at sinman grand and uh, when i look at william anglis as a, as a hospitality management institute um i think it's the largest hospitality management uh, right now, institute yeah. in sri lanka yeah. and uh, you your facilities when i look at uh, you have great facilities i told you about my experience being work, studying at a operating hotel and you have brought that almost that level of uh, a facility for the students which is a dire requirement when you study hotel management because you can't study you can get certain knowledge in a classroom but you need to be able to put that into practice and you have given that platform to the students in sri lanka which is a great great uh, opportunity i think and also if you look at the opportunity that you have given for international students uh, which is also a requirement i think you know because it will help our students to mingle with different cultures different type of people from the region uh other than the fact that it is generating uh, foreign oh, reserves yeah, yeah, sri lanka yeah, yeah. uh but also the impact on our students you yeah. know being able to mix and, and and culturally mix and get understanding about other different cultures will help the industry going forward a lot you know so i think you are doing a fantastic job uh, i'm waiting for my my opportunity to go and go and visit the 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 university um yeah i'm looking forward to working with you you're more than now. you are welcome to the campus we'll take you one day thank but you just give us a little time because this pandemic I know. Uh, gives us little uh, hiccups but yeah. we will definitely make sure that you you are on board with us so uh, ladies and gentlemen we have come to the end of the the talk show uh, today uh, sorry we had couple of uh, hiccups and couple of disturbances while the discussions were going on because the hotel operation is running also my phone rang so sorry about those uh, disturbances so i am going to the last segment of the question the questions today i wanted to hear mr munasinga what is your message to the public the message to the public is i think uh, the industry had suffered a lot um after the end of the war we saw a good pick up uh in the sri lankan hospitality industry now with the with the bomb blast in in april 2019 and then followed up with uh, the pandemic uh, the industry has suffered quite a lot um we are an industry which generates over 4 billion uh, 4% of the gdp of sri lanka um where 400000 people are directly and indirectly involved in this in this industry so we need to have a little bit of patience and understanding uh for hospitality industry um we also need the support from the public actually wherever possible uh to support us uh in the industry you know uh because what we need is also we need the talent to come in uh we need uh the understanding of the hospitality industry uh of the public so that that we can get more talent developed uh 
when you look at the, the pipeline of hotels that are coming into Sri Lanka and that is very encouraging you can see um, I was looking at a, a report yesterday there are about 20 different international hotels from international brands are coming into Colombo itself over the next five to six years so that is encouraging because they are looking at Sri Lanka and Colombo as a destination because they have trust that our tourism will boom so there's good opportunity for us all of us in Sri Lanka um, to create more job opportunities, also create generate more revenues for everyone uh, involved in the industry. Um, so that's why all these international companies are putting trust in Sri Lanka. So it's a matter of time, I think. We need to be patient, we need to be cautious during this time, how we operate our hotels uh, during the pandemic. Um, we have to stick to our, our, our guidelines that has been given uh, so that we can sustain our business. And which is also very important is that we all get vaccinated. Uh, so that we can say we are a safe destination for tourists to come and we also need to get um, our country uh, cleared up in the destinations where we have been listed as a, as a red uh, list country uh, so that the, the tourists when they come, when they go back, they don't need to uh, go, for, go into quarantine. So these are a few things that we need to do, but I know that everyone is working towards this. Um, towards the end of the year, I think we could see better results and we just need to be patient and, and, and work towards building our industry for the arrivals that we're expecting in early next next year, I think. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you very much for watching this episode. This is the second episode that we did with Cinnamon. We have done Mr. Dilip Mudadenia some time back, this is the second episode. Today, we were really talking about uh, the role of cinnamon in destination branding and also destination branding, how this works in the country. So we look forward to seeing you in another episode. Thank you very much for watching this episode. Please do not forget to subscribe and like and share this video. Thank you.